Hey, we're getting right into the material. Zodiac signs, horoscopes, crystals, palm readings, vibes, energies, chakras, all that stuff, including the Enneagram, which is just Christian horoscopes and numerology, are all demonic, satanic, and divination in nature. We're gonna get right into the material of biblical numerology and how to not go into witchcraft. Let's get into the show. Hello, welcome to the Bless Room Report. We are getting right into the material about biblical numerology and numerology and even the Enneagram and all this other stuff when it comes to numbers in your life, when it comes to signs, miracles, and wonders, and seeing numbers in your real life. And so I just want to list out um, some things so people can understand what's happening when you see numbers in your life and what's at play. So number one, there is a certain amount of truth, but it has been perverted. So what it means to be perverted is to take a thing from its original intent and change it. So if you ever study the Hebrew in the Bible, there are numbers and biblical numerology, right? It's like five is the number of grace, seven is the number of completion, um, so on and so forth. Eight is the number of new beginnings. So there is some truth, not in numerology itself, but in the systems. And we're gonna get this from Ecclesiastes 3. So in Ecclesiastes 3, it says in verse one, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the sun. So again, I'm not doing anything dramatic here, but God is a God of order. He is a God of systems, but the systems of God do not usurp the spirit of God. And so likewise, you, you will notice how the Lord has patterns, how he has set up seasons. Even the number four is the number of um, d division and stuff like this. This is how he has a time, a purpose, a season for everything. It is just so high when the Lord talks about his ways are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts. How high to the degree the sovereignty and spirit of God is. But just note that numbers are just a tool. They are simply a governing body, but a governing body, not like an entity or a deity or anything, but it's just a tool, just like money is a tool, just like Moses' rat, um, rod and staff was just a tool, just like your car is just a tool. Um, they're supposed to be used but a governing tool does not usurp God as the ultimate <laughs> governance over us. And that's the sovereignty of God. He's in everything, he works through everything, and he uses everything. But you need to perceive that just because our life works in these systems doesn't mean that the created thing usurps the creator. So this comes from Romans 1, 25, where it says, they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worship and serve created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. Amen. Again, um, just like in Romans 1 25, it says they exchanged the truth about God for a lie in worship and serve created things rather than the creator who is forever praised, amen. Meaning that if we begin to see numerology or numbers or these tools that the Lord uses to speak greater and begin to worship and have idolatry in nature, this is how you go into divination, this is how you go into witchcraft, this is how you go into the satanic, the demonic, and all this weird stuff because you think that if the Lord operates with these systems, clearly this is how he always talks. No, <laughs> we prophesy in part, we speak in tongues in part until he who has become full um, comes again, the second coming of Jesus Christ. But even on its best day, numerology is probably just lazy prophecy. <laughs> and so 
if we are disciplined in our communication with God, our fellowship with God, and our, in short, our relationship with God, we really don't need numerology. But I do want to point out when biblical numerology is successful and ideally what the Lord is doing when it comes to seeing numbers. Like legitimately, what's the purpose of seeing numbers? And this comes from John 1.1, all right? So in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So when it comes to lazy <laughs> um, prophecy, when it comes to numerology, what it is supposed to do is turn you back to scripture. The Bible is the living word of God. It is literally perfect prophecy. Every, every single Bible verse from Genesis to Revelations is prophetic and is multifaceted, multi-layered. And so what you need to do is be able to distinguish, to interpret and have revelation about what the Lord is telling you when you have numbers appearing in your life. I'm going to give you a perfect example of this. So the Lord told me to, and again, this is spirit of prophecy and also just regular communication. God is a father that speaks to his children. He says in John 10, my sheep know my voice and they hear me and a stranger they will not listen to. And this is why the Bible, and I'm going to go through this a lot, says to study to show yourself approved a good workman rightly dividing the word of truth that you need not be ashamed. And so if you don't know enough Bible to make sure that when you're doing prophecy, you don't creep into witchcraft, divination, um, the satanic and the demonic, then you're not going to rightly divide the word of truth because the Bible is a double edged sword able to separate the bone from marrow, the spirit of man uh, from his heart and his intentions because um, the heart is deceitfully wicked. This is how you go into divination. This is how you go into all this weird stuff, demonic stuff, because you are not able to rightly discern because of your heart being wicked. And so when you see numbers, and I'll give an example. Um, the Lord told me to read Revelations 3. And in Revelations 3, um, Revelations 3.20 really resonated with my spirit. So the Bible says that the spirit bears witness. So when we are reading the Bible, again, all Bible is perfected prophecy. And so when you're reading it, it awakens your spirit, man, especially if you are born again, baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And so when you are reading it, if a verse sticks out to you and really resonates with you, it's resonating with your spirit. And so when you're awakening your spirit, what you'll find is you'll begin to see the trends of God, the patterns of God, his personality, his character, and how he speaks to you intimately. Again, my sheep know my voice. So he, this is what righteousness is, how he meets each of us individually. So I'm reading Revelations 3, and Re Re Revelations 3.20 really resonated with me about the Lord standing at the door and knocking, and when he opens the door, he will come in to whoever answers him and have fellowship and communion, right? And so I'm living my life and I have an unction from the Lord. This is Ephesians 4 about how to advertise in my business because I have this new product that I want to launch about Jesus, Jehovah Rapha being the Lord, our healer, and um, being the great physician. So I'm following the Lord, I'm following scripture, and the Bible verses he's telling me to read, Matthew 13, Matthew 15, um, so on and so forth. And all the Bible verses are about healing. And so I'm about to make this um, apparel. You can check it out in the description box below, the link in the bio and all that cool stuff. And what I find is that the Lord told me to advertise with a key word being Christian doctor. And I do SEO, which is search engine optimization, where you can look up like how well something can get advertised in search. And I'm looking up these <laughs> um, numbers for Christian doctors. And comparably, if you look up like rap music, um, a million people look up rap music every month and I'm looking up Christian doctors, only 
320 people look up Christian doctors every month. So my natural mind, <laughs> I'm like, why would I ever advertise with this word? Because it's not beneficial. Not enough people are looking for it. It's not going to yield any fruit. But again, we're not looking at numerology. We're looking at the character of God, the voice of God, his personality and his patterns. And me and my begrudging behind <laughs> being prideful and having head knowledge but not knowing him intimately uh, i'm like man i ain't him from the lord that's not him but i'm learning his ways i'm being more finely tuned in his voice and so i look up uh, bible 320 on google and two verses came up revelations 320 I stand at the door and knock whoever opens uh, with me and answers, I will commune and sup with them. And then Ephesians 3.20 that says, I will do exceedingly abundantly anything that you can pray, think or ask for. Boom. Numerology just led me back to the scriptures and the answer prayer. Because I, again, this is discernment spirits. I was trying to decide or well, discern if I'm hearing from God or if I'm hearing from the flesh or from the devil or whatever, right? But the way I did it, it pointed me back to the scripture. <laughs> so again, systems cannot usurp the spirit of God, which are the scriptures. It's all revelation comes from the word of God, it comes from the Bible. Jesus is the word, the word was God, the word was with God, and the word became flesh. The Bible is perfected um, prayer, perfected prophecy. So this is what you need to know if you are seeing numbers, literally Google them and the Bible. <laughs> Look up those numbers and that is the purpose. All um, the Bible says that the Lord hides the things and makes signs and riddles for us to discover him. And so this is what the spirit of revelation is and even salvation when God shows himself, when God reveals himself to us, that's when we awaken to his spirit. This is when we awaken to his likeness. This is how we know the truth from a lie. It is 1 John 4, um, test every spirit if it be from God. If you confess that Jesus is Lord and comes in the flesh, <laughs> that Jesus came in the flesh and died and resurrected and rose, then it's from a God, right? Who, what spirit <laughs> tells of God's resurrection, Jesus' death, burial, resurrection, and Jesus being Lord more than the Bible? <laughs> and so this is how you test every spirit. You test the spirit by the Bible. But we just have to be in tune enough to be able to notice God's patterns, his ways, his personality, his character, and his tools so we know how he speaks to us. And so when we're discerning, we have to go back to scripture all the time. Scripture beats prophecy, it beats signs, it beats wonders, it beats miracles, because this is a falsehood from the devil that you think that a false prophet has to be wrong. That is not what the Bible says. It says that the Antichrist and um, devil, when he comes back, he's going to be masking as an angel of light. Why? Because he will even be able to deceive the elect. How? Because he's going to be doing great signs, wonders, and, and miracles, and like all this stuff, just like the soothsayers and the um, Witch doctors or whoever that challenged Moses, they turned their snakes and rods and staffs into um, a snake. But Moses, having the true power of God, turned his rod into a serpent that ate the other soothsayers and uh, all the warlocks and witches. Because why? What perversion is, is to take something authentic, take it um, that is genuine, and make it counterfeit make it perverted, make it distorted, make it satanic. And so anytime you take anything out of its original confines and you pervert it, boom, you have just falling into sin, iniquity, and transgressions. Examples, the Lord says to eat food. Food nourishes our body. Guess what happens when you eat too much food? Sin is called gluttony. 
just like wine and um, liquor and alcohol. You are allowed to drink wine, liquor, and alcohol. Guess what? Too much wine, liquor, and alcohol? Boom. Drunkenness. Sin. Just like even when it comes to sex. Sex within the confines of marriage is a blessing and a covenant and all that good stuff from the Lord. You have sex outside of marriage, you have just ruined <laughs> yourself. You have sinned against your own body. And so this is where we have to have spiritual maturity, spiritual um, discernment when it comes to, hey, yes, something can be true, but it does not mean that it comes from God. And this comes from Deuteronomy 13. All right, so Deuteronomy 13. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder and the sign and or wonder comes to pass whereof he spake unto thee saying let us go after other gods which thou hast not known and let us serve them thou shalt not hearken unto the words of the prophet or that dreamer of dreams for the lord your god proveth you to know whether ye love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee, <laughs> thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. If thy brother, the son of thy mother or thy son or thy daughter or the wife of thy bosom or thy friend which is as thine own soul entice thee secretly saying let us go and serve other gods which thou hast not known thou nor thy fathers namely of the gods of the people which are round about you nigh unto thee or far off from thee from the end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth thou shalt not consent unto him nor hearken unto him neither shall thine eye pity him neither shalt thou <laughs> um, spare neither shalt thou conceal him but thou shalt surely kill him thine hand shall be first put upon him to put him to death and afterwards the hand of all the people and thou shalt stone him with stones that he died because he sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage and all and all Israel shall hear and fear and shall do no more any such wickedness as this is among you if thou shalt hear say in one of thy cities which the Lord thy God hath given thee to dwell there saying certain men the children of Baal are gone out from among you and have withdrawn the inhabitants of their city saying let us go and serve other gods which ye have not known then shalt thou inquire and make search and ask diligently and behold if it be truth and the thing certain that such abomination is wrought among you thou shalt surely smite the inhabitants of the city which the edge with the edge of the sword destroying it utterly and all that are that is therein and the cow thereof with the edge of the sword and thou shalt gather all the spoil of it into the midst of the street thereof and shall burn with fire the city and all the spoil thereof every whit for the lord thy god and it shall be in heap forever it shall not be built again and there shall cleave not of the curse thing to thine hand that the Lord may turn from the fierceness of his anger and shew the mercy and have compassion upon thee and multiply thee as he hath sworn unto thy fathers then shalt thou hearken to the voice of thy God to keep all his commandments which I commanded thee this day to do that which is right in the eyes of the Lord thy God that's amazing it's the word of God and so what the Lord is trying to tell us is that hey you can have accurate false prophets or soothsayers or witch doctors 
or horoscope or palm readers and all this other stuff. And it'll come to pass in Deuteronomy 13. But the root of it leads you away from God. It leads you away from the Bible and it leads you into, in short, mysticism and occult practices and Freemasonry and all this other stuff that is, again, divination, sorcery, witchcraft, soothsaying, uh, occult practices, horoscopes, zodiac signs. All this stuff has crept into the church and has perverted Christians from the original intent. God doesn't want magicians. He wants prophets, he wants priests, he wants apostles, he wants teachers, he wants evangelists, he wants pastors. And so, again, when I say numerology is just a lazy prophecy, we can all hear from the Lord. We can all hear from the Holy Spirit. And that is the spirit of prophecy, the word of God. This is the spirit of revelation, the Holy Spirit. And this comes in the gospel in the book of John. So um, the truth of prophecy, and this is um, Jesus speaking, and this is John 14, 26. Uh, we'll do 25. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, from the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you, okay? Um, peace I leave you, my, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. Give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So this is what the Bible talks about. If we want to know anything, the Holy Spirit will teach us. This can be in scriptures, this can be through our leadership and through our church body, being the body of Christ jointly fit together. And this is why it says, do not forsake the gathering of the brethren. And there is safety and wise counsel and a multitude of counselors because you begin to do weird stuff when you're isolated and you're by yourself. It's like, oh, I see this number. And um, the number three and 20, um, three is the number of God and that's the Trinity. And 20 is um, 10, the number of governance times two. Double, like you, you fall into divination and witchcraft really easily um, because you begin to worship the created thing more than the creator. And this is what the Bible says um, in 2 Timothy 3, 5, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. And so again, we're saying like, hey, how different ways has witchcraft, soothsaying, um, divination, the satanic demonic has seeped into the church. One example is the Enneagram from Christopher L. Hortz. And I really want to apologize. I actually referred this book in one of my top five book videos and I pulled it down um, because I actually repented because I found out that it was witchcraft. So if any of y'all are actually familiar with like chakras, it's like a Eastern uh, philosophy about the movement of energy and vibrations and frequencies and all that stuff. The sacred Enneagram um, kind of operates in that same measure. So what we find in it is that it divides up the fivefold ministry into the nine numbers, one through nine. And it's basically a cross between biblical numerology, horoscopes, zodiac signs, and chakras and new ageism and universalism where there is some truth mixed in with the demonic and just one example of this again this comes from deuteronomy 13 it says if you go into another land and they're speaking truth and it leads you to other gods and other practices like kill that prophet or this dreamer even though what they're saying is accurate and i think why the Enneagram or whoever became so popular was because people will look and read the numbers and all these little signs and stuff and be like, yo, it's so specific and so accurate, it must be true. And we didn't test what spirit is of. And so even hinting at this, right, um, it's from Christopher L. Hortz, where 
it says, was first introduced to the Enneagram in the slums of Cambodia. And so again, this doesn't say it, he got this revelation from the Bible. It doesn't say he got it from scripture. It doesn't even say that um, this has Christian roots. It has um, Eastern roots. It has Eastern practices um, in it. And so again, um, <laughs> not to make jokes or light, <laughs> but you kind of can. Um, if you are really familiar with anime and chakras and all this stuff, you will see that the principles here, um, when it says when you are of health or, um, uh, let me, I don't really want to read this thing, but I forgot the terminology. I haven't read this in a little while. But it um, begins to talk about like um, different relationship <laughs> patterns, um, what happens when you're in harmony, and um, again, um, disintegration, integration, a grace. So again, it it has a lot of biblical terminology in it, but that's what um, deception is. How do you know that you're deceived unless you are tricked? And this is what the Bible says, that even the very elect will be tricked. And again, I repent uh, for referring this as a reference and opening y'all up to divination and sorcery and witchcraft. I am sorry. And Jesus is Lord and he is good. And also, um, even the people that introduced that to me because I was in a leadership course at a church and they taught it as like biblical truth. But again, just because something is accurate doesn't mean it's biblical truth. And you have to make sure that you study, show yourself, approve a good workman that does not need to be um, ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Yeah, let me look up that Bible verse because I think I just read it. <clears throat> so that again, that is 2 Timothy 2, 15. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And so um, what this means is that the Bible is the only truth that we have, it is the ultimate truth. And it says, take every thought into captivity and make it submit to the word of God. If anything you're reading, any of these add-ons to the Bible, um, do not submit to his word, um, or even have a form of godliness, but not deny the power thereof. Um, when you begin to take on identities, when you begin to um, take on these numbers, take on um, these names, it says, all those who are in Christ Jesus are a new creation. The old has passed away. And so how am I taking on any type of identity that is not named in the Bible? That is not named in Christ, any numerology, any horoscopes, any zodiac signs, any palm reader, any of this stuff. And so if the Bible doesn't identify it as an identity, as a son of God, <laughs> um, as a pastor, a uh, a prophet, an evangelist, a teacher, or an apostle. These are all the names or a disciple, a Christian, a believer. All these things are listed in the Bible. Anything else that you try to take on as identity um, is <coughs> witchcraft. And this is why it says in Romans 12, um, do not conform to the world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You read all these things, you hear all these podcasts, you watch all these YouTube videos, they are transforming <laughs> your mind. And, and they're making you conform to the principalities, to the systems of the world. But again, all these things are just tools. They just have degrees of truth, but the ultimate truth comes from Jesus Christ our Lord. So I just want to end there with um, just a prayer of repentance because I'm just gonna give y'all a heads up. If you have been practicing zodiac signs, horoscopes, numerology, chakra, enneagram, palm reading, tarot card reading, all that crap, most likely you have a demon <laughs> or a unclean spirit on the inside of you or demonic possession or demonic oppression because you have opened your gate to witchcraft, the occult, the demonic, and the satanic and all that weird stuff. But that's the power of Jesus Christ being the light of the world. He's able to cast out demons through repentance. And so you're watching this video for a reason. And so it's very easy <coughs> um, to cast out a demon 
by the name of Jesus Christ. So remember that Jesus is Lord, and that is Adonai. <laughs> Yahweh, the creator I am, and all the systems, and Elohim, the creator. And so, again, I don't want to leave y'all without proper teaching or proper prophecy of how to regulate prophecy and how to regulate seeing numbers. When you see a number, um, go back to the scripture. Figure out which Bible verse the Lord wants you to do. So, he, the Lord might be um, specific with you and this is all about spiritual maturity spiritual discernment and honing in you hearing the voice of God and so he might say just directly read Deuteronomy 13 and then you read Deuteronomy 13 he might say read Deuteronomy 14 25 and then you find it so those things are easy but sometimes you'll get things like read Jude 18 and then you go to the book of Jude and you find Jude 18 does not exist. I don't hear from God. I can't hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. I'm getting it wrong. Don't get discouraged. Don't freak out. <laughs> All you have to do is discern prof uh, properly. <laughs> the book of Jude has only one chapter. So when you're seeing having a seer gift or a, just some type of prophetic gift or hearing God's voice, you might have messed it up a little bit or discern improperly so instead of Jude um, 18 it's Jude chapter 1 verse 8 or it's Jude verse 18 and so I think it's with especially with hearing the voice of God in Christians we get discouraged because we think we got it wrong you actually didn't get it wrong you got the interpretation incorrectly and so on it could be said to say with um, the book of John, let's just say he says to read John, I can't remember how many books are in John, but we'll do John <laughs> 100. I already know there's no John 100, but what you'll find, you go look in John 100, there's no chapter John 100, there's not a chapter or a verse John 100. You're like, oh, I don't hear it from God, I'm messing up. Again, you're just not interpreting correctly, you're not discerning correctly, you're not getting the proper revelation. But what you will find is like, oh, there's a gospel of John, but there's also John 1, John 2, and John 3. And so if I see John 100, again, my analogy doesn't work because I forgot the numbers, <laughs> but it might be John um, 10 or whatever and you just have the extra zero so it's just like stuff like that that you just need to be able to hone in how you hear from the Lord and not get into witchcraft or soothsaying by oh um, the number 100 means this and all this weird numerology don't be creepy don't go into witchcraft don't go into horoscopes don't be weird <laughs> the Lord doesn't like weird Christians don't like creepy Christians and don't like demonic Christians that are doing sorcery divination the cultism satanic and the demonic the Lord wants you to again 2nd Timothy 2 15 study and show yourself approved that you are a good workman rightly dividing the word of truth the same goes with um, evangelism and prophecy all prophecy, all evangelism, all prophetic words, all words of knowledge should bring you back to the scriptures. So again, example from my life, I have seen someone in the store and their eyes were very bright. And I was like, dang, um, your eyes are just really bright. But I need enough spiritual discernment and spiritual interpretation revelation of why this word of knowledge and word of wisdom just came to me. And what the Lord told me was, open the eyes of your understanding. I didn't know that Bible verse, but again, John 14, he will bring all things that he has spoken to your remembrance. This is why you have to read the Bible to make sure you're prophesying correctly and reading correctly. And so I literally Googled again, open your eyes of understanding Bible. And then I think it's Ephesians three came up and I was able to give a prophetic word properly because I think we get so excited and are so zealous and but it says do not in the Bible it says do not have a zeal without knowledge you cannot give out prophetic words 
without the Bible, without scripture, without the Lord teaching you, the Holy Spirit literally will teach you all things. And so if the Holy Spirit is going to teach you all things, he'll teach you how to discern, how to properly divide the word of truth through words of knowledge, words of wisdom and prophecy. And so again, that's the biggest thing. But again, um, go back to the scripture. Don't be weird. Don't <laughs> fall into divination and all that weird stuff, numerology and stop reading the Enneagram. I'm going to throw that book away today. Um, and never refer to it <laughs> again but again uh, we need to say this prayer so all these demons the open gates and uh, your eye gate your gate that you have opened you repent of in the name of jesus so if you're reading this uh, listening to this video um repeat after me audibly so you can hear this because faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of god okay <laughs> so say lord jesus i repent for all divination, all witchcraft, everything of the occult, everything of the demonic, everything of the satanic, all horoscopes, all zodiac signs, all universalism, all um, transgressions, all iniquity, all um, trespasses, all um, divination, sorcery, um, enneagrams, vibes, energies, crystals, palm readings, numerology, um, anything, all sins known and unknown, I repent for every open gate. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Holy Spirit, come into me, baptize me with your spirit. Uh, baptize me with fire, Holy Spirit come, blood of Jesus cleanse me. I give you the glory, I give you the honor, I give you the praise, for you are Adonai. You are the Lord. You are the I am Elohim. And you are Yahweh, creator. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. All right, you are good to go. <laughs> Any um, open door is closed. Make sure that you are not falling into divination, you are a priest you're a follower of god you are a carrier of his holy spirit make sure you don't mess up your temple by messing with a whole bunch of weird stuff <laughs> and make sure that you're going back to the scriptures make sure you're asking enough questions in your um, journey of hearing from the lord and communing and having fellowship with him and relationship with him with who what when where why how and just ask them in the scriptures like lord reveal yourself to me in the bible in the scriptures and you're good to go uh, don't mess with all this other weird stuff <laughs> so remember to like comment share subscribe we have new videos every wednesday and sunday and remember to come back on the blessreport.com and to share this video to anybody that has messed with numerology zodiac signs in the enneagram any horoscopes any of that other weird stuff um, so they don't get tricked by the devil because Jesus is Lord and stay safe.